Hello, and welcome to Paint Yourself Into the Picture, healing conversations to help us create the best, boldest, and most beautiful picture of our lives. I'm Reba Linker, best-selling author, life coach, and manifesting guru, and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm going to be reading a story as part of my brand new Tea with Reba series. So I have my teapot, I have my cup, and I'm ready to ready to read. I'm going to be reading a story today um, called Breaking Free from Manipulative Narcissistic Parents. It was originally published in uh, Tiny Buddha, which can be reached at tinybuddha.com. All right, so let's begin. Authenticity, it starts, oh, every tiny Buddha post starts with a quote. So mine was from Brene Brown. Authenticity is the daily practice of letting go who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are. That's the quote I chose to start the um, post. So here we go. I happened to catch the last scene of the movie Moonstruck on TV a few nights ago. The scene marks the happy resolution of various plot threads. And yet I felt as if I was witnessing the sinking of the Titanic. It was like watching a demonstration of what I have come to understand as the two ways of being in this world, dominating versus accepting, narcissism or bullying versus kindness. Having come from a narcissistic family myself, I felt as if the movie was peering straight into my soul. In the movie, Loretta Castorini is engaged to Johnny Camareri, an aging mama's boy who never married out of consideration for his ailing mother in Sicily. In this scene, he bursts in, announcing that he can't marry Loretta because it would kill his mother and asks for his engagement ring back. In the next moment, Johnny's brother, Ronnie, promptly proposes to Loretta, borrowing Johnny's ring to seal the deal. The movie centers on Ronnie and Loretta, yet seeing the last, scene, the last scene isolated from the rest of the movie drew me to Johnny's experience. There he was, controlled by his mother long distance from Sicily, giving up his marriage in deference to his mother's script about who he needed to be in order to support her needs. The confusion on Johnny's face as his brother claims the prize of Loretta's hand in marriage is heartbreaking. Johnny isn't quite sure what is happening, and yet he dare not question his mother's love, nor break free of his supporting role in his mother's drama. His life has been spent, and unless he wakes up, will continue to be spent in service to her at great cost to him. I see myself in Johnny. I was well into middle age before I was able to break free of my father's domination of my life. And I suspect that, like me, many people delay the beginning of their own lives out of misplaced fealty to the stories their parents scripted for them. For years, whether rebelling against my dad's criticisms or craving approval from outside myself, I had on a deep level ceded the, the central role in my life to my dad. Whether we were close or miles apart, communicating or no contact, he was the son and I was orbiting his solar system. This is exactly how he wanted it and I fell into place within the structures and systems of his universe. There is so much truth and humor. Johnny's mother th mother's threats are played for laughs, and yet they are more than mere melodramatic manipulation. An acquaintance of mine energetically supported her narcissistic mother for decades. When she became aware of the family dynamic, she chose to withdraw her energetic support of her mother and for the first time in her life, focus on herself as an individual. The potentially intimidating part is that her mother actually became ill. This is not to imply that my acquaintance should have continued to support her mother. It is simply to say that the energetic connection is real and removing it as necessary as it may be is like removing a crutch someone has grown dependent upon. 
It sparks enormous upheaval and rebalancing for both parties, and yet it must be done in order to achieve greater health and freedom on both sides. The saddest part for children of narcissistic parents, and also for partners of narcissists, is losing confidence in our own authentic feelings, hopes, and dreams. The narcissist's insistence upon pretense and the demand to suppress authentic experience can be very painful. The younger brother, Ronnie, was lucky to have been the black sheep of the family. At least he was distanced from his mother's demands. Nonetheless, he too was damaged. When we first encounter him in the basement of his bakery, he looks like a hurt animal hiding in his lair. He has a wooden prosthetic hand, as Loretta says, like a wolf that has chewed off his own paw to escape a trap. To narcissistic parents, a child is not a full-fledged individual, but rather a character in their story. And the roles they offer their offspring are severely limited. Whether a golden child who can do no wrong or a failure who can do no right, in either role, the child will feel that he must perform in order to keep and win the parent's love. This is not love at all, but rather a form of abuse, which is worse for being invisible to all but those directly involved. The child is asked to give up her own feelings, thoughts, and needs in order to support the parent's version of reality. The child, meanwhile, resists facing the direness of the situation, the truth of a manipulative or even an unloving parent, for she intuits that she needs her parent's love in order to survive. At the same time, she may feel excruciatingly uncomfortable living inside the parents' stories. Like Johnny, she may end up not knowing who she really is and what she really wants, having given up her own thoughts, emotions, and needs for so long. In the movie, neither brother escapes unscathed. Johnny, the golden child, was hobbled, tied to his mother's apron strings, and Ronnie, the black sheep, was also wounded and cut off from the rest of humanity. Like so many rebels among us, Johnny finds solace in the arts, in his case, opera. As a child, my passion for dance sustained me. It was an outlet for self-expression and an opening for the magic I needed in order to survive. Funny to speak of all this in the context of a romantic comedy, yet perhaps the power of the story stems from its basis in profound truth. At the end of the final scene, Johnny sits alone as the family excitedly gathers to toast the new couple. He looks stunned, isolated, and lost amid the celebration. Then, the grandfather approaches Johnny and extends a glass of champagne, offering the last line in the movie. You're part of the family. And with that, Johnny is embraced in the warmth of the family, and I burst into tears. How different is this warm embrace compared to the demands of the narcissistic parent? Johnny is played as a buffoonish character, and the audience is fully rooting for Ronnie and Loretta, yet even clownish Johnny is embraced. This is love. This is real acceptance. This is the tenderness of the movie. This is its big heart, which is depicted not just in the romantic passion of Ronnie and Loretta, but more importantly, in the inclusion of Johnny in the celebration. As the credits begin to roll, a toast is raised. La familia, to family. This is the archetypical image of the loving family. And yet many of us did not experience that. And many of us hide a secret shame that our families aren't like that. I know that I was deeply ashamed for a long time that my story wasn't pretty like that until one day I realized that it was not my fault. On the, the day I accepted my family as it was and I realized that I wasn't responsible and I rejected the stories they told, on that day I reclaimed my right to my truth about what happened, what I felt, what I thought, and what I experienced. 
Reclaiming our stories, our truth, is how we take our power back. If any of this speaks to you, go watch Moonstruck. Johnny hasn't woken up yet from the spell his mother cast over him. Ronnie, with the help of Loretta's love, breaks out of his hurt isolation and reclaims his life. Wake up and face your truth. Sometimes facing the ugliness is the route we must take in order to reclaim our beauty and power. I'm so glad you've stayed with me this far to listen to the story about Moonstruck and narcissistic parents. If you like what you're seeing and hearing, you can uh, stay in touch at rebalinker.com or join my Facebook group at uh, Leaders in Self-Love on Facebook. Remember to paint yourself into the picture, for this is how we heal. Hello and welcome to Paint Yourself Into the Picture, healing conversations to help us create the best, boldest, and most beautiful picture of our lives. I'm Reba Linker, best-selling author, life coach, and manifesting guru, and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm going to be reading a story as part of my brand new Tea with Reba series. So I have my teapot, I have my cup, and I'm ready to ready to read. I'm going to be reading a story today um, called Breaking Free from Manipulative Narcissistic Parents. It was originally published in a Tiking of the Titanic. It was like watching a demonstration of what I have come to understand as the two ways of being in this world, dominating versus accepting, narcissism or bullying versus kindness. Having come from a narcissistic family myself, I felt as if the movie was peering straight into my soul. In the movie, Loretta Castorini is engaged to Johnny Camareri, an aging mama's boy who never married out of consideration for his ailing mother in Sicily. In this scene, he bursts in, announcing that he can't marry Loretta because it would kill his mini Buddha, which can be reached at tinybuddha.com. All right, so let's begin. Authenticity, it starts, oh, every Tiny Buddha post starts with a quote. So mine was from Brene Brown. Authenticity is the daily practice of letting go who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are. That's the quote I chose to start the um, post. So here we go. I happened to catch the last scene of the movie Moonstruck on TV a few nights ago. The scene marks the happy resolution of various plot threads. And yet I felt as if I was witnessing the sing mother and asks for his engagement ring back. In the next moment, Johnny's brother, Ronnie, promptly proposes to Loretta, borrowing Johnny's ring to seal the deal. The movie centers on Ronnie and Loretta, yet seeing the last scene, the last scene isolated from the rest of the movie drew me to Johnny's experience. There he was, controlled by his mother long distance from Sicily, giving up his marriage in deference to his mother's script about who he needed to be in order to support her needs. The confusion on Johnny's face as his brother claims the prize of Loretta's hand in marriage is heartbreaking. Johnny isn't quite sure what is happening, and yet he dare not question his mother's love nor break free of his supporting role in his mother's drama. His life has been spent, and unless he wakes up, will continue to be spent in service to her at great cost to him. I see myself in Johnny. I was well into middle age before I was able to break free of my father's domination of my life. And I suspect that, like me, Many people delay the beginning of their own lives out of misplaced fear.